Welcome back to That Adventure Couple. On this episode, we go on an all-inclusive trip to the mystical city of Luxor, Egypt. From start to finish, this tour was absolutely amazing, so we will put a link for it in the description of the video so you can go on an adventure too. This tour in its entirety is a little over 24 hours long, and it starts from Cairo. The tour company sent a car to pick us up to take us to the airport. All of the transfers and flights were included in the tour. The tour company sent a transfer to pick us up from the hotel and bring us to the airport, and it is very nice. And we were really grateful for that because sometimes it can be difficult to get an Uber or get a taxi. So we're headed to Luxor and we checked in at the domestic terminal at the airport and the airport at Cairo is like a ghost town. It's kind of weird. Like 20 million people live here and we're like the only people flying out. This is kind of creepy actually. They also uh, gave us a pat down after going through the scanners. Hey, I'm all for heightened security. That's good. The flight was good. We have arrived in Luxor. Our driver was there at the airport to pick us up. So we just jumped right in the car and headed over to the hotel. The hotel is okay. It's, we didn't pay the extra to get the high-end hotel, so it's a bed for the night. I definitely stayed in worse. They're going to be picking us up at 4.45 in the morning to go to our hot air balloon ride. Really excited about it. Not really excited about waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning, but you know, that's what you got to do. So We got picked up from our hotel this morning at 4.45 a.m. and they drove us over to a boat. So we are going to take a boat ride on the Nile River to head to our hot air balloon ride. At least getting up at 4.30 in the morning, they did provide coffee for us when we got on the boat. So that's nice. Once the balloon companies get the okay from the aviation, then they bring you out to where the balloons are. And it's about six o'clock in the morning by the time you get here. So you can still see the stars in the sky. Can't pick them up on the video very well, but the stars are pretty. It seemed like they bring about 20 vans or so out here at a time. And they launch about 20 balloons at once. And they are massive baskets. The baskets are the size of a truck. This should be quite the show. These are going to be huge balloons. It also looks like a bunch of military guys are hiding in the park. It's just super duper creepy. Make sure we don't escape, yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Courtney's talking about there's a bunch of uh, corn over here on the side, and there are military people standing in the corn, well, I guess, to make sure. And it to make sure that we don't go over that way, I guess. Apparently we've gotten the approval from the Egyptian Aviation because they are... Our balloon's inflated, we're about to go up. We need volunteer from... Bye. <laughs> In front of you, this is Temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Temple of Queen Hatshepsut. Behind Hatshepsut Temple is Valley of the Queen. They got us in the air just in time to catch the sunrise. This is Habu Temple in front of you. As we told you, this area was crowded with local houses. Government removed all of the houses from here 
to give opportunity for excavation work. In, in front of Hatshepsut Temple, Polish University and Spanish University is working. Under the Red Balloon, Valley of the King, Chicago University is working there. Okay, I think this was a really amazing experience. If the rest of the day is a bust, I still call this a win because this was worth the price of admission. This was amazing. Our balloon was about to come down on somebody's house, so they had to toss a rope down to the crew on the ground to pull the balloon out into the desert. We just got done with our hot air balloon ride and we are now on the boat heading back to the hotel to get breakfast. And after breakfast, it's time to see some tombs and temples. All right. The breakfast was included with the room and the tour. So we got some bread, vegetables, some cheese, an egg, and we got coffee coming. After breakfast, our private tour guide picked us up and we headed to the Karnak Temple. We have a private tour guide for just the two of us. I wasn't sure if it would be a group tour or a private, but it was just the two of us. We were at Karnak Temple. This is the largest temple in the world. Our guide said it is built on 62 acres. The largest temple in the world. Whenever you go to any center, it's built mainly by Vikings or Turkings. Here, as I told you, they keep adding. This is why where we stand here, we have five kings. Everyone came and added his own. The statue is of Ramses II, and it is made out of one piece of granite. It is enormous. The scale of this temple is incredible. It's difficult to imagine building this with modern day technology, let alone with just hand tools and manpower. All the giant columns were originally painted in bright colors and you still see some of the color. 3,500 year old coloring on the wall that hasn't been washed away by the Nile flood. This obelisk weighs 300 tons and it is made out of one piece of granite. I cannot imagine trying to move that here and stand it up. This is the room where the pharaohs would come to leave the offering for the sun god. The room itself is made entirely of granite. The offering table was here and there was a shrine on that pedestal. Hey babe, what are we doing? We are walking around the small beetle three times counterclockwise for good luck. Seven times was for marriage and 14 times was for fertility. Behind me is the sacred lake. They used this to purify themselves and purify their offerings. The lake used to be filled with water when the Nile would flood all the time, but since they've built a dam, it doesn't flood anymore, so they have to pipe the water in from the Nile. 
We are here at the Temple of Karnak. This is the biggest temple in the world, and I'm really glad that we came to this one first today because it's not really crowded right now. So we're able to get some nice shots of all the, the relics, like these statues back here behind me. Our tour guide, Yolanda, has been fantastic. She is so knowledgeable about all of ancient Egypt culture. We could very easily spend the entire day just in this one temple alone, but there is lots more of Luxor to see, so we are off to our next stop. Next stop on our tour of Luxor, we are at the Valley of the Kings. Included with your ticket to the Valley of the Kings, you get to go into three tombs. So we're going to do those, and then we bought a separate ticket for our Tutankhamun's tomb, King Tut's tomb. So we can do that because we're here, so we should go ahead and do that too. the tomb of Ramses II. It goes nearly two kilometers underground, but it's been closed for the last 20 years because they don't want tourists going that far underneath the mountain. The first tomb that we visited in the valley was that of Merneptah. We did not do any research on the tombs ahead of time, so we weren't sure which ones we would like to visit with our ticket, so we went on the recommendation from our guide. The decorations on the way down to the burial chamber were pretty good, and the burial chamber was quite large. However, if you're limited on the number of tombs that you're going to see, I would probably go to Seti the first instead of Merniptah, because the burial chamber was not as ornately decorated. For our second tomb, we did the tomb of Ramsey the first. In this one, the walls are painted with bright colors and it is very well preserved. We are getting ready to go into King Tut's tomb and that is where his mummy still resides. Because there was a tomb above his, all of the robbers took everything from the tomb above his and did not touch his. So when his was found, he still had a bunch of gold and other artifacts. Those have now been removed and placed in a museum, but his mummy still resides here. So let's go see it. The tombs for the ancient Egyptian pharaohs were dug throughout their reign. Since Tutankhamun's reign was less than 10 years, his tomb is quite a bit smaller when compared to some of the other pharaohs. We have one more tomb to visit and we chose that of Ramses IV. The entrance by is big in this one. But I'm used to eating a 150-ton granite uh, tomb in here. It's got to be. Yeah, I guess there's a big door big here to get the the coffin in here, or the the tomb box, the box the coffin goes in. This is the tomb of Ramses IV. It was the most impressive of the tombs that we visited. We didn't do any research ahead of time, and I did find out while looking through some pictures later that the tomb of Seti looked pretty awesome, so you might check that out if you're headed to the Valley of the Kings. In this tomb, the sarcophagus, or the vault, is one piece of solid granite, well, aside from the lid, weighs 150 tons. It's enormous. We're coming out to the Valley of the Kings. Bring some sunscreen, a hat, sunglasses. It's bright out here and it is hot. We are now at the Hat Ship. Hat Ship Suit. Hat Ship Suit <laughs> Temple. And she was a pharaoh that reigned for around 20 years. She did have a stepson who she had pushed aside so that she could become the pharaoh and he did not like that and so whenever he was released from jail he came and murdered her and a lot of the temples and areas that have statues of her have been destroyed because of him okay unlike most of the other egyptian temples Hatshepsut's temple was carved directly into the mountain instead of being built out on its own there are three terraces to the temple the second terrace has shrines to Hathor and Anubis. And then the top most prominent tier 
has a shrine dedicated to Amun-Ra, who was the sun god, or the leader of all the gods. In this room was the shrine to Amun-Ra. Lunch is included in the tour, and they brought us a little bit of everything. Porty got the chicken shawarma with all of it comes with the soup and the rice and some vegetables. And I ordered the like a beef meatball dish. We also got yummy tea. Yeah, and she's enthralled with her bendy straw. So lunch was really good. A bunch of traditional Egyptian food. It was all delicious. We have one temple left to see, and that's the Temple of Luxor. So we're headed over to that side of the river to see it now. We're currently cruising on, our, on the Nile River cruise part of the tour. And it's on the same sort of water taxis that we had this morning when we went to the Hyderabad balloon ride. Only this time we have that all to ourselves, which is kind of nice. We arrived at the Temple of Luxor. The Temple of Luxor is located about three kilometers from the Karnak Temple where we started today at the opposite end of the road known as the Avenue of Sphinxes. This nearly three kilometer long path between the two temples contains over 1,000 statues of the Sphinx. The excavation of the Avenue of Sphinxes was only recently finished and was open to the public in 2021. The Temple of Luxor was constructed around 1400 BC. And much like the Karnak Temple, this was built over the reign of several pharaohs on an absolutely massive scale. The main courtyard, or colonnade, at Luxor Temple contains 74 columns that are around 50 feet tall. We're now at the last temple for our Egypt tour, and I would say that this is the most impressive temple that I've ever seen had I have not gone to Karnak this morning, because that was the most impressive temple I've ever seen. This one is second. This temple is really cool because it is over 3,000 years old, but throughout the years, different groups of people have come and added their touches. So a mosque was added to the top, and then there's a painting of the Last Supper as well. So there have also been influences by Greeks as well. So it's really cool to look at all of the different influences that have affected this temple over time. The last thing on our full day tour that was included was the flight back to Cairo. I hope you'd enjoyed spending the day in Luxor with us. We both felt like our tour of Luxor was absolutely amazing. If you're visiting Egypt and want to spend a day in Luxor and take in all of the sites, we will put a link for this tour in the description of the video and it is absolutely worth it. Be sure and hit that subscribe button for lots more tourist tips and adventures.